So another thing to look into um, this year was, of course, like the second base position battle. Um, you know, who's really going to take the reins? It's it's not as if I feel like if you talk about a few years ago, who would have second base this year? The guys aren't there. Like, and a big part of it is like Rodolfo Castro. Like, he kind of came out of nowhere. Um, it's kind of cemented himself as a potential fit for second. Uh, heading into this year, I think like he had the inside track. We all were intrigued about uh, Rodolfo Castro. So let's talk about center base position battle. Uh, at this point in time, Castro batting again, handful of stats, right? With Castro with the, the yeah. team lead, 13 at bats, uh, batting 231. And, you know, where's Bay? Yeah, Bay with 12 at bats as well, batting 083. I think those are like the two top dogs that you're probably going into this year thinking of who might battle out. There's some others, um, but it's not like anyone's like really taking the reins right now from second base. So, I don't know, let's talk about second base. What do you think right now heading into this year? Who's who's got in that battle? Yeah, I think, um, you know, going into spring training, this was really the only uh, – this is probably the most interesting competition, right? And, and I, I don't know how much of a competition it was. Like, I, I, think, I think Castro going into this had a pretty good hold on the position. But, you know, if Castro maybe has a terrible spring – and Bay has, and Bay looks amazing. Then maybe that's where Bay can kind of take a little bit of a hold here. So far, that hasn't happened, right? Castro's spring has been okay. You know, he, it's been a week, but he's got a home run. He's got leads the team and and you know runs batted in and with five. He he struck out you know <laughs> about half of his plate appearances so far. But you know he's he hasn't looked awful by any means. Um, and G1 Bay, on the other hand, hasn't looked good at all, right? And again, it's just 12, 12 at bats, but you know he's one for twelve, has you know a stolen base in there as well. But uh, Bay hasn't played well. Castro hasn't played great, but you know he's been better than Bay. And I think with him already kind of having that inside track to the position, Castro is kind of looking like that guy who's going to be the opening day second baseman. And I think that's kind of what we all thought was going to be the case, but. You know, Bay definitely has a chance. It's just Bay's not doing what he needs to do to take a hold of that chance um, thus far. But a lot of spring left. But I think Castro right now has the inside track. Yeah, I think you pretty much nailed it on the head right there, too. You know, I mean, again, for one, it's so early. But the strikeouts right. for both of them, you know, you talk about Castro with six strikeouts um, and Bay has five. And like the thing about Bay is, he 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 needs to make contact. Yeah, that's his like his speed is his major thing, right? His contact skills, like he needs to be hitting like three hundred to be productive because he doesn't have power. Uh, I think there's a, like a little bit of sneaky power. Like we talked about the past couple years, how you know he's gotten like eight or nine home runs in a season. Like okay, so maybe there's a little bit of power that makes him a little more intriguing. That he's not just like a slap hitter, but it doesn't hit enough power to make that difference. Like he needs to get on base. Uh, like the thing about Castro is you could have a low batting average for him and still see production. Uh, like this kind of proves it. Like you look at his stat line, 231, yeah. 231, 462 slugging. <laughs> like I can see that from Adolfo Castro. Uh, you can live with that. Um, so I'm with you. Like I felt like because of like all we keep talking, he is so toolsy. Like everything with Castro, he has so much. We said, like, in a degree, he's cruise light, right? Like, he mm. can throw hard. He can run pretty fast. He's so athletic. You know, he has some power. He's nothing like O'Neill Cruz, but if you squint hard enough, right, like, it's a little it's a little cruise light in there, kind of like yeah. we joked about Marcano being Tucker light. Uh, but anyways, uh, with, like, again, like, you are intrigued by Castro with the stuff that he can do. Um, but I would say, like, heading into this year, like you said, he had the inside track, but what Castro also presents is he's that dude that could probably lose it in spring based off like he could, he, he can go into a slump, you know, have a bad spring and Bay could just be hitting around and it's like, okay, you got to give Bay the second, uh, second base job, but Bay's not giving him that push like at all right now. Uh, and again, yeah. not saying like they, Bay can't have a good spring you know, the rest of the season, not saying that Castro can't end it that way too. But so far what you're seeing, I'm with you. You know, the strikeouts are concerning for Bay, I think, more than even Castro. 
Yeah, um, I, I think Bay still has a role on this team. Um, like, I think you know, if you're if you're looking at another competition, it's you know who's going to be that that backup infielder, right? Because then you you're looking at you know whoever loses the second base battle, and you're you're combining Marcano and, and Chris Owings in there, you know, and you know Triolo maybe um, is in there too. So you're looking at some people, I don't know what happened to Donardo. He just fell off here, but um, you're looking at some people who are competing for that backup spot. I think Bay has the clear inside track to that where, you know, I, I like Bay there a lot more than I would like someone like Marcano. Cause I think Bay at least provides some sort of uh, offensive upside to him uh, along with his versatility. Whereas I don't think Marcano can hit at all. So I'll, uh, you know, give me Bay as that extra guy on the roster. But yeah, I think as of right now, as I, I would have had Ro- Castro ahead of Bay, and, and that hasn't changed from what we've seen from, from this first full week. Right. Yeah, we don't need to talk about Marcano too much, I feel, because I think both of <laughs> us have just like almost from day one. I know you had your little shtick there yeah. for a week, but that was clearly a shtick. Um, it's just there's been nothing. We didn't understand the trade that much, but it was like, let's believe in Ben. Marcano hasn't shown anything since then to warrant like, okay, there's there's a reason to target Marcano and all these deals that Ben was trying to do. And I'm with you. Like, I'm just, there's nothing about Marcano that stands out. So, yes, I want Bay to take that role as well. And I think he can. Yeah. And, I mean, I think Chris Owings is someone to keep an eye on because he's, he's maybe the most – he's definitely the most experienced yeah. out of all the guys. I mean, he's played in – parts of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten major league seasons Chris Owings has. So, you know, he he's been around. Um, he's actually had a pretty good spring in the little that we've seen him so far. But I think in order to knock somebody off the roster, he's gonna have to like really open up some eyes. And I don't know if he's quite doing that. But I I noticed yesterday some Chris Owings chatter on Twitter um, after he hit you know, his home run yesterday. And I would, uh, I, I would say, you know, maybe back off that a little bit. I don't see Chris Owings making this team as of right now. Um, I mean, I've seen weirder things happen, but I, I think with the, with the collection of middle infield types that are on this roster, you know, they, they'd rather go with one of those guys than, than Chris Owings, who they would need to, you know, boot, boot one of those guys probably off the roster in order to make that happen so right as of right now i don't see chris owings in there but you know i think i think bay's got that i think bay's got that last infield spot kind of locked down right now i think the one thing that well two things that chris owings presents which doesn't warrant it's a high enough level that he's gonna make the team for but like you said the veteran presence like he is a vet He's experienced there, but he does play a shortstop, like for real. <clears throat> Excuse me, unlike a Castro Bay and such, who can fake the funk for maybe a little bit. So, like, if there was an injury for Cruz, we've talked, like, who's going to take that? I guess Piguero, you know, maybe discuss maybe coming up or whatever. But we, you know, like his defense and especially Eric talking about the Ips, you know, <laughs> um, right. like Chris Owings, like he can play, he can play the position. So that could be your, like, your way of allowing Piguero to still develop, right? You can have Chris Owings there. So that's the one thing he, like I said, he he brings, but I don't know if that's enough to, like you're saying, keep Bay from making the roster or such. Um, so I'm with you. I, I do, I like Bay's skill set. Um, it limits him, right? Because of the lack of power and such. But I think he's I think he can be a good enough utility type player. You know, so yeah, I'm hoping I agree. I'm hopeful for for that for this year from him. Hey, you all, thank you for watching. I know we try to provide the most entertaining content that we can, uh, and we'd love to spread it to as many people as possible. So uh, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you could take the five seconds to like this video and subscribe to the page, it helps out so much more than you know. Thank you, and let's go Bucks.